Emmett, you have to ask Anna Marie where she's from. <laughs> oh. oh, Anna Marie, you know what? I know that you're by a lake because I've seen your pictures. I know you're somewhere be beautiful. Oh, and, and Dan, I know you too. You're out there too. But yeah, tell but us what city you're from, Anna. And go ahead. I'm even more interesting than that. I used yep. to work at Hopkins as an oncology nurse and bone marrow transplant nurse. I used to do with bone marrow transplant and stem cell transplants. That's what I used to do. So oh, we, wow. That, that, oh. That's interesting. I love that, actually. So, yeah. Well, we got to talk yeah. more, Dan, because you probably didn't know that about me, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> as long as we've been talking, yeah, I, I've I had know. that done. And honestly, I believe that's what put my lupus to rest. Really? Prior to that transplant, I was having flares literally an average one week a month, every single month for 14 months straight. I was in the hospital an average a week and a half because of lupus flares. And then the doctor, after it attacked my heart, the doctor came to me and said, we need to do something. Your, your body is not gonna sustain another flare like that. Wow. So when I got through the heart issue, that's when they found the practice for the bone marrow stem cell transplant as a clinical trial. I remember signing a book that said, you only got a 13% fatality death rate. So chances are you might be okay, but I'm saying like, it's easier say, saying it from the person that's not getting the transplant done. And so again, it was gonna be done in Maryland, but they ended up doing it down here and, and it was a process, but you know what? Since then I flared very minimal. Um, lupus of course did the damage to me already, but just the fact that I wasn't going through that, you know, month consecutively flares of hospitalization was something that was huge for me because a year of doing that, it was like, wow, I'm, I, it was so bad. I put a bag at the door that had extra clothes, extra socks, extra everything. Cause I knew I was going into the hospital because of these flares and thank God for that practice. I'm, I'm here now again, doing what I do representing men with lupus and male lupus warriors. Did you get your own stem cells back? Yes, okay. absolutely, Amaris, you're, you're exactly right. If you're familiar with the phoresis process, that's what, it, that's what it did. I had these tubes that they put inside my chest and every like once every, I think it was once every week and a half or so, I had to go in and they extract my own cells. So what they did was when they extracted my cells, they doused them with chemotherapy to kill the cells or to kill the, the cells, uh, the T cells, I guess, in the cells that was causing the lupus trait in me. And then they froze them and put them away. And then a couple months later, I end up going in. Now here they are giving me a full dose of chemo where I had no immune system at all. And that's where that death rate came in. It was like, I was in space. Everybody had plastic all over them. They couldn't let one germ into that room or it would have killed me because I had no immune system. So after they froze them, filtered those stem cells that they took from me, they injected them back in me, that duplicated my bone marrow cells and populated my body all over again with stem cells, this time without that T cell, which was that lupus trait at the time. So again, that quiet my whole flare. And again, we here talking because of it. That's wow. amazing. That's amazing. When I was doing it, we did that. And we also did allergenic transplants, right? Transplants from other people. And mm -hmm. we did less and less because it has such a high mortality rate, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm glad you did yours. That's, well, it's exciting. <laughs> I'm glad we did. It, was, it was worth being a guinea pig for a clinical trial. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what's amazing is you and Anna Marie, you guys could have crossed paths because she was right there at Hopkins doing that at the time. Well, no. the Hopkins here in San Diego or? Yeah. No, Hopkins in Baltimore. In Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because they, they had the practice down here, they, the plan was for me to go there. They had ready uh, set everything up, but then months later, they knew the practice was coming down here and they had to wait for the doctor's approval. When they got the approval, yeah, I ended up doing here, San Diego, uh, Scripps and La Jolla. I know Scripps and La Jolla. I didn't mm -hmm. know that well. And that's My right, mother, that's um, she had lupus too. She passed away in the summer um, from lupus. And um, they had got her on the UC San Francisco uh, kidney program. And so they moved from Arizona. That's why I'm in Arizona. They moved from Arizona to the Bay Area for her to be there. And she did well. She was diagnosed at the age of 37. And then she passed wow. away the past summer. She was 78 so she was wow. a warrior and now i have it my niece has it and my nephew has it. wow wow my prayers to the family yeah 
It's a lot. And I it's understand about all the flares every week because <laughs> I do that. <laughs> yep. Um, but I'm about to start. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Gamunet, the plasma infusions. That's what I'm starting on Monday. And I go for eight hours every day for five days. And then after that, once a week on Thursday for four months. That's, yep. that's, that's a lot of time, but prayers to you that all goes well and stay strong towards it. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, God got you. You'll be fine. Oh, I know he does. I work full time from home and I go to school full time. I'm showing my kids just like my mama showed us. You can do it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. <laughs> Good for you. Good for Amen. you. I love it. Amen. Amen. Well, Anna Marie, I think we have about 18 people on. I don't know if you're quite ready to stream yet. Her mute, her mic is off. I think you're muted. I, we can't hear you. I yeah. will go live. That's what I said. <laughs> so let me do that. So yeah, just let us know when you go live and we'll get everything started. I, I see there's about 18 people so far. So that's awesome. Awesome. Give me a second. There we go. Can you all see my screen? Is that up for everybody? Looks good. You can see it? Okay. Sorry, guys. I always take a little bit of time to, to get this. To, to get going, yeah. I know we're going to have a couple people on here who do not have lupus, so I just wanted to go over some brief, uh, a little bit of a brief background. Um, just so that they're up to speed when we get to, to, to our discussion. Hi, Gail. I think we're good. Hi, we're live? Yeah, I think we're live, so go for it. Thank you, everybody, for coming on tonight. We wanted to give you um, just a little brief intro into um, lupus and autoimmune disease and really any chronic illness at, at all seems to mimic the same kind of issues that we are, we have. So um, I'm thanking you all for coming on. Uh, let's, I'm gonna get right into the meat of the matter. So the first thing is I know a few of you don't have lupus. So I just wanted to give you a brief definition. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. And that means it's a condition in which your immune system screws up and it attacks your good cells. Shouldn't be doing it, but that's what it does. That's the very basics of it. So in our bodies, the, you know, the immune system is there to fight off infection, and that's what it should do. But in a body like mine and Emmett's and several of you on here, that happens all the time. And our immune system fights off all of our good cells. So, now, the reason there's so many of us on here with lupus and there's so many of us out there with it and other autoimmune diseases is here. There's over a hundred different autoimmune diseases currently identified, a hundred. So just, here's just a, a brief list of them. I'm not gonna go through them all. I can tell you which ones I have and then the others can speak to what they have. I have lupus, connective tissue, Raynaud's, psoriatic arthritis. Um, I have fibromyalgia. I have neuropathy that's come from that and multiple other uh, issues that have stemmed from the lupus and the, uh, the damage that it's done. I have chronic kidney disease as well. Um, and I'm sure the others will speak to what they have. But there's a few on here that I just wanted to point out aside from that, because people don't realize that they are autoimmune diseases. So Lyme's disease, for example, highly prevalent in our area in Maryland. I'm not sure you know if it is. I think in North Carolina it is as well. Um, that's mm -hmm. a huge one. So... Um, and I'm sure it is in, in other areas too, but I don't think people realize that things like juvenile diabetes is an autoimmune disease. And that's why it's you know so dangerous for people right now with COVID with diabetes. So things like that aren't, aren't, they aren't brought out and people are not aware. So a good part of what I wanted to do was to bring these discussions out, to have people start talking about the different things that they have and how they're affected and then maybe some other people will get some ideas on different ways to treat themselves, um, some, natural, um, some natural alternatives. Um, a lot of people on a lot, a lot of medications, we'll go over all of that. 
And then I wanted to take a minute, first of all, to thank and welcome Emmett. Emmett Henderson is here. Emmett is the owner of Male Lupus Warriors. He's also the co-creator of the Lupus Dream Team. And Emmett's brought it his, made it his mission to bring lupus awareness to the world and particularly in the male lupus community, but not limited to just men. Um, that just is his strong point, of course. Um, but I saw on his Facebook page, and I just had to say, say this out and put this here because this is so true for Emmett. You only live once, live life to the fullest. And this man, when he tells you his story is gonna bring you to tears. So Emmett, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, if you're not following me, you can follow me on Facebook under Emmett Henderson III. Um, and I also have my own organization that is also on Facebook and Instagram under Male Lupus Warriors. So with me coming out, you know, I've had, I got diagnosed with lupus in 1995. I was pretty young and I, I was that strong type of guy that I had my own property. I had a good paying job. I had my own car. I had everything. I had two kids at the time as well. I had everything going for me. And then all of a sudden I'm going from a hundred you know, miles an hour every single day down to say about 60 because all of a sudden I'm getting these weird, crazy pains. And I was really head smart, but again, I'm a guy. So I got that stigma to where, all right, I either lose work and lose X amount of dollars to go to the hospital, or I keep working through this because it's just a small little pain. And guess what I did? I kept working through it because I'm a guy and, and it's just little pains to me. So it's, it's one of those things now to where as time went on, the pains got worse and they were consistent. They didn't leave me. They started from fevers to joint pains and everything. Oh, backwards a little bit more that in 1980, which I don't know if some of y'all was even born then or not, but in 1980, I was a little kid and I had the rash all over my face and on my arms. We all know what that rash is today. I even put a post recently about a butterfly, if you guys are following me, and a lot of people commented on that, that the butterfly rash is one of those things that are identified with lupus patients. Of 1980, nobody knew what it was, not even the doctors. So of course I got dismissed by putting a rash on my skin and for the fun of it, don't go out in the sun too much. So I'm like, okay, that's all I had to endure and take from there. Fast forward 15 years later, then the joint pains came, the fevers came and then lower pain in my back. That lower pain in my back, not knowing was my kidneys. And again, I shied it off because I knew that every time I went in to check my joint pains, when they did x-rays and found nothing wrong, they dismissed me and said, put ice on it, go home. So here I am again, every time I'm not going in no more because I'm gonna be told the same thing. So the joint, the pains in my back, excuse me, got to a point where I could barely walk straight. The owner of my company had me go in or told me that I'm gonna take a few days off for rest. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go in. I'm not gonna take days off for rest. They're gonna find up, just find something. Maybe I got gas or maybe I got a pulled muscle and I'll be right back at work. Guys, I didn't step back into that shop over a year and a half later. That's because when I went from urgent care from work down to the Memorial Hospital, I was in the hospital for almost three, I would say three and a half weeks in that hospital of doing almost every test in the book for them to find out what it was. And then here's the kicker. After about that time with all the blood draws, all the tests and everything, a, a, a lady comes in called a rheumatologist. At the time, I didn't know what it was. And you know what she tells me? She says that I think you have a disease that it's rare for your ethnicity. I'm Filipino and Black. For your age, I was 25 at the time. And for your gender, being a man. So I'm thinking like, what is it? And she ends up telling me you may have systemic lupus, but it's rare because it's a woman's disease. So now I'm tripping like, hold on, hold on. You're going to tell me as much man as I am at the time of 25, are you gonna tell me I got a woman's disease? And I wasn't taking that for an answer. But then she said she'll confirm it in a couple of days. Of course, a couple of days, I doubted it. A couple of days later, she comes in, you have systemic lupus. So I'm like, doc, give me some pills then so I can get better and go home. And she goes, it don't work like that. So we all know what these autoimmune diseases and what I was thinking at the time because I was uneducated about it. What knowing that my statements at that time didn't make no sense to the doctor, it doesn't happen that way. So years of everything that I've endured from, I just mentioned the two transplants. If you guys are following the Lupus Dream Team, we've highlighted a warrior every single Wednesday. Today was my day. So my whole description and story is in there of everything I did. But just quick, I went through two transplant, a kidney transplant, a bone marrow stem cell transplant I mentioned. I did have heart failure. 
That put me in the hospital for over three and a half months where I had to get into a, a coma due to self-paralyzation where I had, once I got out of it and recovered, I had to walk and talk and use my arms all over again. I had liver disease. I had restricted lung disease. I had to wear an oxygen tank for about um, over a couple, over about a month and a half or so. But again, me trying to be the man that I was, was always trying to go to work. But here I am carrying an oxygen tank on wheels behind me. And it was so embarrassing at the time to tell people what was wrong with me, but that's part of my journey that leads up to today. And also with everything that I've been through, which is a few more things, shoulder replacement, knee replacement, the doctor just confirmed my other shoulder is going to have to be, so I had to stop lifting weights, which that's a little bummer for me right now. But all of these things that had come out, the, the biggest thing that I believe that got me through all these years, even that consecutive time of going back and forth to the hospital because of flares, was my mental state. I personally believe that I would not be where I'm at today if I wasn't strong about it. Remember I mentioned as a young person, man, I, I had my son at 18, my daughter at 21. So I'm already in fatherhood at a young age. I'm in a management position at an auto dealership at a young age. So therefore I had responsibilities. When, it to when I was told I was being sick, now I have to think, okay, aside everything else, now I got to deal with this. But I was focused on doing that. Taking a toll through the years with everything wasn't easy at all. I Sorry, went through a lot. I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry. I went through a lot. And with everything that I had been through, I had to maintain and sustain. Did I lose some type of mental, should I say, straightforwardness? Of course I did, because I'm human and I can't always be strong, 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 thinking that just because I'm a guy, I'm going to get through all this. It's not like that at all. Um, through the years of everything that I've gone through, I've still tried to maintain that. And I have procedures to me were just like, let's get them done, doc, let's get them done. Um, and then now with doing my own thing, advocacy, my organization, I connected with Deanna and Anna Marie. And what they did was they showed me some ways that I can keep certain things going that not only am I already doing it, but it's keeping me doing it and keeping me more in a positive way. So. With my story being told, I credit a lot to mental health, and I speak on that now, mental health and mental wellness. You keep both of those in, in, in pretty much order, your body will follow. We all know what kind of deliberating disease lupus is. We all know what it can do to us. However, if we're straight here in the mind and we practice the wellness on an every single day, this will give you the motivation that your body will respond to. And there's a lot of things that I read up on that, that shows that, teaches that. And it's not just from prayers and God and thank you and this and that. You need to do some self-care for yourself. And these are the things that help me get through everything. My shirt says, I turn my pain into power. For everything that I've endured and I've gone through, I decided now that lupus took me out of work because of my latest diagnosis of a brain lesion that's still going on to this day. Doctors don't know what it is. But I ain't nowhere near worried or scared about it because... It's just something that is going to get, I'm going to get taken care of no matter what. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know what they're going to say, but I'm going to be fine no matter what. So all of that pain that I've endured, I'm turning into power now by full advocacy, by telling people that gone through anything near that I've gone through less, more, that there is more to this illness than, or excuse me, there is more to our life than there is this illness. There is more to our life. I love life too much to where I wanted any of this to take me out or take me away. And there are ways out there that, that can help you with that. You gotta be strong first. You gotta have determination, motivation, and mentally be prepared to know what you possibly may go through with lupus. They, until there's a cure, I can't expect tomorrow for me to be 100% healthy, even though I feel good tonight. I gotta be prepared and ready for that. However, if I had ways and means of helping me get to that point, I want to do that and I am doing that. And so therefore that's how and why I feel like I'm thriving today. I keep things going, keep things pushing. I don't look back. And if I do look back, it's only because I'm learning from my experience. That's it. And keeping it pushing forward. So y'all know my story. If you don't, now you kind of know it. Um, anything else I can say and help, please get at me. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Emmett. That's fantastic. I apologize, guys. I lost the internet, so I was on on my phone, but I lost the internet, so I'm back. Hopefully, it'll stay on. Um, but I just wanted to give a brief little story about my my run with lupus and, and autoimmune. So um, 
you know, it's all, I think we all kind of start the same way. We kind of have something odd happen to us and it's, you know, just a matter of testing and testing and testing. So for me, I started breaking out in the rash. No idea what the rash was. I was in my um, early forties. So I was kind of late, probably had lupus way before that. Cause you know, years back I had um, some surgeries done and I had a really hard time recovering and we didn't know why there was no reason for me to take so long to recover, but I was sick for like two years in a row. But back then they didn't test that much for something like that, unless you ended up like Emmett in the hospital. So the doctors would just say, oh, well, we're just going to keep treating you for this, that, and the other. And for years, that's what went on. But I was breaking out in this horrible rash. And I started recording everything to see if we could figure out why I was getting this rash. We thought it was a food allergy. So every time I ate green peppers, I broke out in this really weird rash all over my face. So I figured, well, you know, what do you do with that? You go to an allergist, immunologist and get tested, right? So I do that, I go to the immunologist and he is actually the one who discovered that I had lupus. He is actually the one who ran all the blood work, strange as it seems, who discovered that I didn't have an allergy to green peppers. Green peppers are a nightshade. Nightshades flare in us, they cause flares in anybody with lupus and autoimmune diseases. And lo and behold, every time I had green peppers, I would flare up and we didn't even know it. So he ran all the testing, he found that out. And then I was sent to, um, to Johns Hopkins, to the um, lupus clinic at Johns Hopkins, in fact, in fact, who diagnosed me. It was um, Dr. Petrie at the lupus clinic. Phen phenomenal, phenomenal clinic. Um, if anybody ever has to go anywhere and, and wants to get top-notch care for lupus, Johns Hopkins, the lupus clinic, Dr. Petrie, unbelievable. So anyway, I started with all of these medications all of these medications on the screen. And I was up to 30 medications a day because I had a medication for each and every autoimmune that I had, and I had multiple autoimmunes. And then I had the medications for the side effects of the medications. And then I had a medication for the nausea for the side effect from the medications, medication. It was ridiculous. And I had, um, you know, I, I was at the point where I was taking so many pills and kind of like sleepwalking through life. Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. I don't know what was going on. I don't think I felt anymore. I don't think, I don't think I was even living. Um, it just kind of was so over medicated. And then of course, all the other things come on. You have depression, you have anxiety. I particularly suffer from PTSD. I had a, a very traumatic incident. I was, I was robbed and the gun was held to my head and um, it, you know, I was only 17 when it happened. And the trauma from that um, left me with PTSD. And then, you know, every time I felt like things were out of my control, I would have this horrible panic attack. They thought it was a heart attack at one point. It was so bad. But I just felt like I wasn't living and things were really bad. And then last November, a year prior to this past November, I ended up on bed rest. And I, I had been working full time and I worked a lot. I'm an accountant. I worked a lot and I worked, you know, 14 hour days, a lot of days. And I just, it was just, it was too much. It led me into a horrible flare. And I ended up on bed rest for two months. And when I came out of bed rest and realized, you know, I can't keep going on like this. I could barely walk. I was then on a cane uh, walking around and I'm, you know, I'm not that old. I'm, I'm at that point, I was 52 years old. And it was horrible. I felt like an old lady and I just couldn't I have grandkids. I couldn't, I couldn't even hold my grandkids. I was so weak. And then I met Anna Marie and Anna Marie introduced me to supplements. And I'm going to let her talk about that in a little bit. But first I want to talk about the other things that I did because I did multiple things. I spent years researching. I changed my whole lifestyle. I changed my diet. I changed everything. So I really wanted to talk about a few of those things because I think some of that might help some of you or somebody you know. So one of my main things was stress. Every time I would get totally physically and emotionally worn out and stressed and my body was stressed, I would flare. And that flaring for us is the worst because that sets everything into motion. So then one of the main things that I found that I had to do was find ways to relieve stress. 
I personally do that through meditation. I do that several times a day now. I have changed what I do as far as watching TV. I no longer watch news programs. I don't watch anything violent because violence triggers me. I, um, I actually don't watch regular TV at all. I watch the Hallmark Channel, HGTV, and even then it's only things that I record. Um, I don't listen to regular music anymore on the, on the radio station. Everything's pre-recorded because I don't wanna hear about anything stressful because I have found that those triggers for me start up a flare. So one of the things that you can do is try to relieve stress in your life. Feelings and the way you feel about everything, like Emmett was just talking about, the positive attitude was massive for me. And I think it is for all of us. I think when you're first diagnosed with lupus or any autoimmune or any chronic illness, you have to almost go through, you go through like an angry stage, then you go through like a mourning. It's like a mourning of a life that you've lost is the best way for me to describe it. And if you can get past that stage, if you can get to the point where you can get positive again, you can change this disease. You can change the way you live with this disease. And that positive attitude, not only does it make you feel good, it does actual things to your body and your brain. Actual chemical releases are done with positive thinking. So for me, it's very important that every day I wake up and I think of something that I'm grateful for. I found it best to keep myself a journal. It works for me. It doesn't work for everybody, but I would highly suggest that it's worth a try. Next to my bed, I have a journal and I talk about something that I am grateful for from the day before and something that I'm looking forward to for this day coming up. Because every day I woke up, it's a blessing. Someday it might not be, but every day that I wake up, I feel like it's a blessing. Sleeping. Oh, sleeping was huge for me. I didn't sleep much. I didn't sleep much at all when I was flaring. I didn't sleep much before I was flaring. That probably helped lead me into a flare. Um, and after researching it, and in fact, today we spent quite a bit of time on, on the phone with a doctor um, on a sleep study talking about sleep and the effects of it on your body. So particularly with people with autoimmune disease, sleep is hard. Sleep is one of those things that's very difficult for us. We wake up during the night in pain. Many of us wake up during the night because we have to run to the restroom. I have chronic kidney disease, so I have to run to the restroom all the time because I have to drink all the time. Lots of fluids in mean lots of fluids out. So for me, that was waking up several times a night to do that and then not being able to get back in that bed and get comfortable. Well, one of the main things that we've learned is that when you don't have enough sleep, you have an impaired immune system. Well, that's horrible for us. So one of the best things that you can do is get regulated with sleep. And we do have another workshop that's coming up for anybody that's particularly having an issue with sleep. And we can talk about that. I'm sure Anna Marie can talk about that, but it's vital for us to get a good eight hours of sleep. And when I say a good eight hours of sleep, I mean sleep that takes you in to that sleep cycle phase for healing. You can't be there tossing and turning all night long, waking up all night long and having your body heal. It doesn't work. Your body needs that sleep. Moderate exercise. This one was extremely difficult for me because when lupus takes me down, I can't move. So if it's at all possible for you in your situation, any kind of moderate exercise, we have to be careful. We can't overdo it. Overstress on our bodies is so difficult for us. And we do like to, most of us do like to push it. Um, and most of us pay for pushing it. So um, moderate exercise is huge for us. And that can be something simple as, you know, maybe parking your car a little bit further away than you normally would and walking to the store or just taking a walk with the dog, or for me, it's going outside and playing with the kids. Huge for me, massive for me, was changing the way I eat. I was not a good eater. I was just not a good eater. It wasn't that I ate horrible foods, it was that I ate the wrong foods. I wasn't a fast food eater, so that wasn't an issue but I ate the wrong foods, not even knowing it, thinking I was eating fairly well and watching my weight, which has always been an issue for me. 
um, I thought I ate a fairly good diet until I found out that there are certain things that people that have autoimmune diseases just should not eat. And I switched to an anti-inflammatory diet. I don't know if you're all familiar with it, but just the basics here, um, you can Google it. There's a ton of information. I'm happy to send out information, but this is what I pretty much follow all the time. I won't say I don't slip up. I do slip up. I do like things on the bad list. So I do eat them sometimes, but I always feel bad when I do. So what you want to have are a lot of vegetables, fresh fruit, tubers. So it's sweet potatoes, not regular potatoes. I didn't like that at first. I admit it. <laughs> potatoes were my downfall. So sweet potatoes, um, non-processed meat. That's really important for us. We need to eat grass-fed, organic, non-antibiotic injected, non-hormone injected uh, meats. Protein-rich foods that are fermented are very good for us. I can't do it, but if you like kimchi, go for it. I can't do spicy, uh, but if you like it, go for it. Watching the oils that you use, massive for me. Now I use only avocado oil and um, olive oil. My husband doesn't happen to like coconut oil, so I can't use it in anything, but it is good. Our herbs and spices, I use them liberally. I just watch the salt. Um, vinegars. I use apple cider vinegar in everything. It happens to be much better for you because you need to have your body pH balanced. A lot of people don't realize that, but pH balance is huge for us. We need to be in a non-alkaline state. So it's very important for us to keep that uh, alkalinity low. Natural sweeteners. So I also use stevia in the raw. It is not on this list, but if you're going to use another sweetener, that's one of the better ones. Um, green tea, black tea, I love it. Bone broth, I make it every single week. Every single week, I make a bone broth of some sort. Now, here's the list of what we have to avoid. Every now and then I'm going to have it, I admit it, and I pay. So, shouldn't have rice, pastas, breads, breakfast cereals. We all know that anyway. Um, uh, things that, that people don't realize, peanuts, peanuts and peanut products are not good. You're better off with nut butters, almond butter, cashew butter, than peanut butter. Eggs should be used sparingly. And I don't think a lot of people realize that unless they have eczema. Those with eczema know that they should use eggs sparingly, but the rest of us didn't. I didn't realize that anyway. Um, milks. I now use almond milk instead. Um, Let's see what else. Beverages. I know we have to avoid alcohol. Sorry, guys, you have to avoid alcohol. <laughs> and coffee. Coffee is another one. Uh, refined sugars. Be careful of that. And artificial sweeteners. Be careful of that. And all that seems pretty basic. Now, here's the ones that I did not know about. Oh, I didn't get, oh, I thought I had a list in there. I apologize. I thought I had a list of nightshades in there. I should have. Let's talk about nightshades. Nightshades are things that will trigger us. So green peppers are a nightshade, eggplant. Um, let's see what else. Potatoes, regular potatoes. We shouldn't have that. Um, tomatoes. Tomatoes are nightshades. And some people, and I in particular, can tolerate certain kinds of tomatoes and not others. So I can tolerate Campari tomatoes. I can tolerate cherry tomatoes and plum tomatoes. But if I go with a, a tomato sauce that's pre-made, they're using regular old tomatoes in it and that will trigger me. So that's something else you have to watch. Now, part of the reason that all these things are issues with us with the foods is leaky gut. I know that's been all over in the news. It's been on magazines. Celebrities are talking about it now. Leaky gut causes inflammation. Inflammation causes us to have flares. Inflammation is what causes us to have so much pain. So we need to limit inflammation as much as possible in order to feel less pain, in order to keep our diseases at bay and not flare, and also to be able to move, which is gonna help keep our joints and, and everything in better shape. 
So inflammation is a massive thing for us. So I wanted to have, uh, introduce Anne Marie. Anne Marie Tolman, again, as you know, we were talking in the beginning, is a um, Johns Hopkins trained nurse. She did work in oncology at Johns Hopkins. She's also the founder and CEO of Brain Solutions and Brain 360 and Rewiring Your Brain. And she can tell us more about supplementation and our diets and why supplementation matters. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. And thank you, Emmett. I love those stories. Um, would you mind just taking off the, the presentation for just a sec? Because I'd love to just people to also just see me. And guys, um, Welcome to everybody. Um, I just want to do a brief, brief explanation about what we're what we're doing here and what's important for us to remember when we think about natural products and any kind of autoimmune lupus. Um, I I do not have lupus. I have been um, I've been honored to work with Deanna and um, and she didn't tell much about her story, but Deanna. Um, using natural products what I, I do want to do what I want to explain to you really quickly is that the gut brain connection is huge and we often think about our brain just being here right in our in our brain we think about okay it's it's right here um, we actually find out more and more that we have several big neurological centers in our body and one is in the heart it's a big neurologist there's a lot of neurons in there and that's how we feel it's a big field as well and then the gut. And if you think about the gut, how huge it is and how many neurons are in there um, and also how many um, kind of foreign, foreign right, biome is in there as well, foreign substance for bacteria, viruses, right? It's all in our gut. And so the more they have done research about this gut-brain connection, the more they found that there is a significant impact of the gut on the brain, right? And so we call it nowadays our second brain. Interesting, for example, as the research that's been done around Parkinson's, um, Parkinson's, of course, it has all kind of, we think about Parkinson's in the brain, right? But they did research where people had the, the vagus nerve, which is the connection between your brain and your gut, right? There's a connection, a big nerve that's in between there. For people who didn't have that connection well established, it was mostly people who had problems with gastritis, had problems with their stomach, and they cut off the nerve. That was a procedure they did. Okay, so the connection between the gut and the brain was severed. There was a significant amount of people had less Parkinson's years later in that population. So here you have a population that that connection between the brain and the gut was not there, right? It was not really there and they had less Parkinson's. So is that a proof? Of course not, right? Of course it's not a proof, there, but it is an, an indication that there is such an important connection between that gut and between, and between the gut and the brain, right? And moving forward, we also find that even with autoimmune diseases, which, right, is still not completely in a connection. We don't know exactly. I love, Emma, that you talked about T cells and then stem cells and all that kind of stuff, that there is some kind of connection. We know more and more. Um, but, but we know that there's a dysregulation of the immune system, right? And again, the immune system and the neurological system are, are very, very close connected because there's a large immune system around your heart, for example. We don't think about that. But a lot of immune cells are actually generated in that heart area too. So the, kind of the combination, and, and honestly, guys, that was probably my interest coming from, from a very traditional background from Hopkins, right? Um, educated there, got my master's there. But then I started getting into all these alternative health and natural solutions. And I was like, wow, there really is this, 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 um, this connection between all these different systems, our neurological system, our gut system, our hormonal system, they're all very, very much intertwined. And a lot of medications can only have one, they have one area they focus on, right? They're synthetic and that's how they work. That's what they're supposed to do. And when medications work, great, right? I'm, I'm not opposed to medications. The one thing I found natural solutions are able to do is they're able to adjust, able to adjust to the body and what it needs, right? And, um, and they're a little bit more broader as well. So a plant, for example, doesn't have, like ashwagandha, doesn't have just one function, there's multiple functions. And according to what the body needs, the body is, can do something with those raw materials and make a big difference, right? Um, sleep, for example, is one of those. And we have a sleep product that has uh, tryptophan in it. 
And tryptophan is a precursor to melatonin. I'll talk a little more about that later on why I think it works. But here you have a basic product, right? During the daytime, tryptophan turns into serotonin. That's our feel-good neurotransmitter. At nighttime, just because of the light, it turns into melatonin. So you, here you have tryptophan, right? That's a basic product doing two things in the body. If we give just melatonin to somebody, that's all it can do. But if we give tryptophan, it can turn into serotonin and melatonin, right? And suddenly you can have so many more effects. So I think that was my, my initial interest and it's my continued interest in, in looking at natural products, at natural way to support our bodies and thus also support people with lupus, with autoimmune disease. And um, before I go and talk a little bit about the products that I do really love, Deanna, I would love for you to tell your story because I think it's really powerful for people to hear and it's been so profound. And I didn't expect that when I, when I started working with you, I'm like, well, let's try some of these products just to help you feel a little better. Honestly, I didn't even know everything that was going on because you didn't talk about it, <laughs> All right? But tell us a little more about what happened with you when you started uh, using some of these natural products. Sure, absolutely. Um, and you know, that's, that is true because anybody with lupus can tell you that we get tired of saying, this is what's wrong and that's what's wrong. And we just, after a while say, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> People say, how are you? Well, we're fine. We're all used to that. So yeah, I was on, I was on four different kinds of painkillers. I was on Ambien to sleep. I was on um, three different kinds of depression medications plus onset medication so that when I had a full on panic attack, I had something right then and there too, to bring that down. I was on 30 medications a day. And um, like I, I was trying to explain before and, and I got thrown since we were, <laughs> since I got kicked out and ended up back in, but I wasn't living. I was completely on bed rest for eight weeks. And when I came out of that, it, I just felt like I was sleepwalking through life. As soon as I started the, um, the Amari supplements, it was unbelievable to me. Within weeks, uh, my inflammation level came down to the point where I was on no more narcotics, narcotics that I had been taking for a couple of years at that point, fairly strong stuff. Um, and that I didn't need those anymore. And they weren't even working. Truth be told, they were not even controlling the pain. Um, but I had to keep taking them because when I came off of them, the pain was even worse. Um, so I was able to come off of that. And I was seeing a natural doctor at the time and i had been working on my diet. And all of a sudden one day, my blood pressure just went crazy. We couldn't figure out what was going on. I've been on blood pressure medication for decades. It was controlled. Um, but all of a sudden my blood pressure was, it went berserk, like so low that she thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. And when we figured out what was going on, I no longer needed blood pressure medication because my blood pressure after being on the supplements for two months at that point, not even quite two months, I don't think, it was now normalized. My blood pressure that for decades had been high was now in a normal range and taking blood pressure medication like I was, was bringing it way too low, which was insane. Um, Things like my cholesterol level, it was 202 before I started. And you know, we all get blood tests all the time. When you were on lupus and the various medications, you're getting your blood drawn. Like I kind of wanted them just to put a thing in my arm and just have it there all the time so they could just stick the needle in and go. It was that, it was that frequent. Well, my cholesterol went from 202 down to 131. I had been eating the same diet for years then, <laughs> at this point, you know, it had been like three years I'd been on the same diet. Um, so, and that's to me insane, but what's even most important to me because I have chronic kidney disease, my creatinine level um, was, I was functioning like an 80 year old woman is what they told me. In layman's terms, my kidneys were functioning like that of an 80 year old woman. And now I'm back in a normal range and that is, unheard of that just doesn't happen wow. so i mean to me my entire life has changed i am not the same person i was a year ago and it blows my mind so what did you use 
because this has blown my mind too, guys. I'm, I'll be honest with this. I, I see a lot of people with autoimmune diseases, um, which have results, but, um, but Deanna has been really, really awesome. So what did you use? For, for so I started with the mental fitness kit. So I, you know, people are not going to be familiar with it, but the mental fitness kit contains four different products. One is, is called relief plus relief plus, um, helps reduce inflammation massive for us. I started on very high doses of that, higher than, than they normally say. I talked to Dr. Sean, the, the um, creator of the products and our genius at MRA. Um, and he said to start with a higher dose. I started with three pills in the morning, two in the afternoon, one at night. I'm now on two pills twice a day. Um, so I started with that. I and also took- in it, right? That's high in turmeric, yeah. High in, very high in turmeric, correct. But also not even just plain turmeric, it's the blend and the quality of the turmeric that made such a huge difference for me because I had tried other turmeric products. I had been researching this for a while. I had been you know, sick on and off for years. So I had been researching this for a while. So I had tried um, the over-the-counter and I had tried the, um, you know, the advertised, supposedly best on the market kind of things and they did not have the results like this had. So it's something about this proprietary blend that worked for me. Um, I also take the Mood Plus. The Mood Plus, again, like I said, I had horrible anxiety, depression, uh, panic. I was seeing a counselor uh, every other week. I don't think anyone even knew that because I don't talk about that. I never talk about that. <laughs> but I was seeing a counselor every other week. It was that bad, um, and the panic attacks had landed me in the hospital multiple on multiple occasions. Um, and so I started, and I was on medications for that, um, and fairly high doses. They had doubled my doses back in November a year ago, a year prior. They had doubled my doses because um, of the the issue I was having with the total flare. And after two months, two two months, I guess it was, full two months on the Mood Plus, I was able to wean off of all of those medications. And um, those were things like Zoloft, you know, you, you take, you, you get to the point where you take enough of that stuff and you just don't feel. Like you don't feel happy, you don't feel sad, you just don't feel, and that's no good either. And then I was taking the sleep. Sleep had been a horrible issue for me. I still take three sleep a night, thank God for sleep because I was on Ambien and I was actually on a, um, what they considered to be a um, too high a dose. I was on 10 milligrams of Ambien. And I know at one point they tried to bring me back down to five and it didn't work. Um, and I don't know if any of you know about Ambien, but Ambien is a very powerful sleep pill and it can actually cause you to do things in the middle of the night, not even be aware of them. So it's kind of dangerous. And I did not want to be on that. Um, and I was taking that along with trazodone, another sleep pill, along with muscle relaxers. And that was just for sleep. Uh, yeah, when I say I couldn't function, guess what, guys? I was not functioning. I was, my body didn't move. <laughs> um, so I, you know, all of that, um, all the different immunosuppressants that I was on, Taltz, Otesla, uh, Lyrica at one point, Gabapentin, um, oh, it was another one that began with the C. I can't even remember. They, I've tried them all. I've been on them all. Um, the psoriatic arthritis uh, was really bad. So the TALTS was controlling that. Don't even need that anymore. Um, the migraines. I was on three different migraine pills daily. Shots monthly. Uh, Botox injections quarterly. And four different onset medications for migraines. And most of that is now subdued. I'm down to the Botox shots quarterly and the occasional breakthrough migraine that comes mostly with weather-related pressure changes. It's phenomenal. I mean, it's just, when I say my life is different and my life is blown and now I have a mission, this is why. What's your mission, Leanne? I love it. So thank you for telling your story. I just, I just want everybody to try to try some natural products and to see if they will help them. It may not help everybody. It may, you know, they may not get the results that I got, but I don't think I'm all that unusual either because I know others who have had similar results. So I don't think I'm all that unusual. And I think that anything is worth a try rather than 
suffering and I was suffering. Awesome. Yeah, so thank you. And thank you for that story. It is it's truly a remarkable story. Um, and, and yeah, it is, I, I think you said it so clearly. Um, and I, I think we can go back to the slide that you had too, because what we want ultimately, and what, we are, what we're here to tell you is that the gut-brain connection does matter, right? And, and what matters is, um, is actually optimizing that gut-brain connection in, in such a way that you can start feeling better naturally with natural products. So people always ask me like, okay, this is the mental fitness pack that we actually recommended. We would love to have more of you try this. So this is the mental fitness pack if you want to try it. If it doesn't work, you have 12 months to keep the containers and you can send it all back and you get your money back, right? And um, so right now it really is, you can try it and see if it works for you. If it doesn't, you literally get all your money back. Um, and what we'd love to see to, to kind of see and, and uh, Emmett as well as Deanna is, is for you to go and see if this is going to work for you, right? Again, um, we cannot make guarantees, neither can any doctors actually make guarantees. But what we've seen has been so remarkable. And I think the difference why it works is natural, like I said, the body can use these products, right? And again, that gut brain connection, um, we didn't know about that. I mean, we started to know about that uh, 10 years ago, probably the last two or three years has really come up into mainstream media. And it is not just taking a probiotic because a lot of people think, oh, I'll just take a probiotic. It is really aligning all those three brains, right? And so we have this product. We also have a fundamentals product that really aligns those three brains. And and helps the neurological system and the, and the GI system and the hormonal system all work in harmony. And the minute they start working in harmony is when you see true change. Um, and, and Deanna is right. We do have, um, and this is an extra offer that we have kind of fun for you guys. We have this sleep, um, this sleep bonus coming up and um, it's a three day, what I call, what we call mini retreat. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to help you actually sleep better. And uh, part of this, of course, we're going to use the sleep product that has that uh, tryptophan, like I talked about, non-melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone, and you don't necessarily want to put melatonin in your body. So if you've used melatonin, you're actually putting in a hormone in the body that the, that the body is supposed to make. There's a, it's a very small gland. It's called the pineal gland. It's kind of in the back of your brain. That, that makes melatonin. If you start giving the body a lot of melatonin, guess what? The body doesn't make itself anymore. It gets lazy. So you want to give the body the natural basic products that it needs. So the tryptophan, and, and that's what in the, it's in the corn grass. With, it's from corn grass. It's from the Indian sleep product. So that's how people start feeling better, sleeping better, without that groggy waking up or waking up in the middle of the night or sleeping through the, day, into the night, but waking up groggy or just not sleeping, right? Because we're so much in our prefrontal cortex. The, the, this product really helps you really go into deep, um, deep alpha waves and deep theta waves or so brain waves and in a very much quicker way. So we have this three-day retreat coming up on the, uh, from the 8th to the 10th. I'd love to invite you to go with it. We have some phenomenal people. We have people doing workshops on breath work, on, on, um, on meditations, um, on Pilates. We have a functional medicine doctor doing all kinds of stuff. So we have all of this in addition to that. Um, so we want to kind of finish up. I, I think this is where I'm going to kind of leave it. I would love to encourage you to get the mental fitness pack. We do have a special offer if you sign up um, in the, what did we say tonight or next 40, 24 hours? I think, we, I think we said it has to be done by the 31st. Okay. So this weekend. Yeah. So, and, and then we'll have an extra uh, free product for you as well to choose from as well. But yeah, get, get this by the 31st because we want you to get the products before we start this. And this is our suggestion, right? So you have to get, when you get this product, uh, we want to hear your story. We'd love, what we would love to do if you're saying, oh yes, this is something I would love to try, right? I'm gonna try this. I've heard these products. I wanna try this, right? Um, we'd love to give you an assessment before, very basic assessment, and then um, go through us, go through these 30 days, right? Do this sleep program with us, do get these products into your body, and then let's evaluate at the end, like midway, probably 14 days in and 30 days, like see how are you feeling? What is any changes you have? What we've seen in the general population is that changes are really quick. People start focusing better, feeling better, sleeping better, really, really quick. We'd love to, and we've seen it with autoimmune disease as well. We'd love to see where you're at with this as well. Keep 
if people always ask me, right, what do I with my regular medication? I say the same thing that I said to Deanna, don't change it, right? Um, ultimately, she was able to get off many, many medications uh, with the approval of her doctor as she was feeling better. But definitely don't, don't change that, right? In the beginning, just start doing that. So I guess that's where my end is going to be. We'd love to have you on board. We'd love to come have you start with us and see if this works for you see if this works like it has worked for Deanna and Emmett is is just starting with these products as well we're so grateful to actually um, have him open up the, his network to 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 these natural products right and and um, Emmett I'm I'm grateful to you I really mean that to actually open up because we have so many um, there's so many alternatives that people can do there's so many therapies that people can do that to bring in natural products and natural ways and meditation, I, I think for me is very vital. So I'm really grateful to you as well to, to want to do that. Thank you. If, if I could also say um, that when I had mentioned my story in regards to mental health and how I'm sustaining it with everything that I've done with my organization and then my collaboration, which by the way, my lupus brother Dion is on here from the lupus dream team. So I thank him for coming on to, to represent, you know, men with lupus as well. Um, the, the one that I, I've used was the mood and, and I've been using that to where it got me to a point to where I'm overwhelmed with work, but I'm not, it's an exciting overwhelming. It's not a stress overwhelming. It's not the type of overwhelming to where, you know, I got too much on my plate, I can't do it. For a guy that got taken out of work because of lupus, I literally almost work eight to 10 hours, either on my laptop, phone calls, social media, just doing crazy stuff. But it's more of an exciting one where prior to the mood, I, I felt like, is this a lot for me? I'm gonna continue later because I don't know if I can keep doing it, but it seems like, I, I can honestly say that I've kind of, you know, rationed out my day, my time, and a lot of that to me, I, I, I know that I can't let things get to me mentally. So when, when I was introduced to this, I, I said, what the hell, let's just try to see what happens. It's not anything I woke up and said, wow, I feel so much better. No, you look back and realize last week I was doing this. This week, it seems like I'm so much more calm. I'm so much more better and I'm getting stuff done. So my testimony in regards to that is exactly that. Um, I am, I got the products here. I am doing some more of the stuff. Sleep, I only sleep three hours, four max a night. And I don't know if I want anymore because my pattern is so good. And my doctor said, as long as you're not dragging in the day, some people is normal for some people. So, but I, I'm so interested in, in getting to the rest of them to see how we're doing. But um, thank you guys for that. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Emmett, I love what you said about mood. And we hear that so much, exactly that. People are just able to handle life a little, a little bit better. And you do have a crazy schedule because you're doing so much for male, for male lupus warriors, right? And I think for lupus warriors in general. So, um, but it, it's that, that like a little bit, of, a little bit difference, right? Just be able to handle it a little better. It can make a huge difference. Well, it, it is. And one of the biggest things that each and everyone knows about, and if you don't have to have lupus and any autoimmune disease, is that word stress. We do not need that no matter what we're doing in a day, whether you have kids, a job, just your everyday, you know, task in life, handling everything, you know, in a proportion to where you can time your things out, getting it done, and then sleep good at night, that's having a good day. If you have to go to sleep at night, like I used to when I was working, I wake up two in the morning just to email myself. So when I get to the office, I got emails to look at because work is so much on my mind. Now it's kind of like I make sure I do everything in the day to get it done. No stress. The calmer I am, the better my mood, the better my activities, the better my energy to go on to the next day. And, and you know, what me and Dion preach all the time is, is, you know, we have to listen to our bodies. We can't let life take what's we what we're trying to live for it's bad enough we we're in covid it's bad enough we got diseases we got to fight but then why add on to that by stressing and why and to add on to that um if you're not going to do anything about it so we need to maintain a good stress level and again for me it's not something i woke up and saw this is what happened i realized i'm not doing the same things i was doing a couple of weeks ago i'm doing a lot more better now and and i think that's more likely what i contribute that to beautiful 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, and, and, and Deanna, I'll put it out back to you soon. My suggestion would be get back to Emmett or Deanna or anybody else who invites you to this call. Um, we have a few more days, not that many days, but we can send you more information. We can get you more involved. And then, um, yeah, the invitation is to join us for next month and, and do the sleep retreats and yeah, use the mental wellness products and the mental fitness pack. And then let's see what that does for you. Right. And, and give it a chance. I think give it a chance. That's my biggest invitation to you because it's always making changes. Right. Always takes another level. Right. Another level, a level of courage. Um, but I always say you never know. And if this is going to help you function better and have better mental health and mental wellness i i think it's that's absolutely worth it so yeah and i'm going to put it back to you but that's my invitation excellent thank you Emery. marie and um i didn't tell you this and didn't tell emmett either but i want to give anybody who signs up an extra box of energy nice. because energy is what we all need right <laughs> So I think Emma can, can tell you a little bit about the pomegranate energy, energy because I seem to remember watching him drink it and he liked it. And it's so much better for you than sodas. So you get a natural um, non-caffeine non, uh, boost that doesn't drop. You don't all of a sudden have that down. So I think that's a little something we all need. So for anybody that does sign up, I am going to give them an extra box of the Energy Plus. Well, and I will tell you that this is a fun extra, and I don't know if Emmett knows this, but Aguayesa is in, in, in energy. That is actually from the Amazon. And Amazon warriors, before they actually would go and go hunting, this is really true, would take that Guayesa and would, would actually, would actually um, eat it because it, would, it give, would give them more focus and be ready for the hunt. So <laughs> it's a fun warriors. Uh, it's a fun one for warriors. Anyway. Wow. Good to know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. uh, Dion, Dion's on. I can see him now. I didn't see him before. Dion, did you want to mention anything? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm actually just listening and taking in a lot of great information. Um, I think every, like you know, I've been on for a while. Um, everyone made great points, and and again, um, a lot of the things that Emmett shared. Me and him actually, you know, we share the same emotions, we share the same feelings. Being a part of the Lupus Dream Team and what me and Emmett are, are all about is promoting the good positivity and just and just changing the way that that your that your body heals mentally and physically. Right. But in order to get that physical change, your mental status has to be at a level to where it can change you. Um, I, I will say this: uh, I love what you guys are doing because. I, I believe that people don't understand change is uncomfortable, okay? A lot of people don't want to change. Change is very uncomfortable for certain people. But at the end of the day, if you're stuck in a routine or stuck in a position to where it's not helping and you're not healing, then something has to change. So my message to all of you guys would be uh, change is uncomfortable, but positive change always makes positive results. So I think at the end of the day, people have to be willing to try the product and people have to be willing to try and try something different. A lot of people that y'all see online with, with lupus, it's a bunch of complaints. And I'm not trying to be funny, but a lot of people complain about lupus every day. But my question is, what are you doing to change that whole situation? Me and Emmett talk all the time on a daily basis. And we have good days, we have bad days. But y'all see us going all the time, all the time, all the time. But just like Emmett said, you have to know your body. What may work for me may not work for Emmett, you know, but I think people have to understand you have to, you have to respect change. So I think at the end of the day, if it's not working, you have to change. But people get so comfortable and get so caught up in that repetition. And guess what? A year done went by, two years done went by, and you're still complaining about symptoms when you just didn't want to, want to change. Yeah. So. Amen. 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 You are so right. Yep, exactly. And, 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 you know, it's it's like a routine. We all wake up and there's days where every day is going to be different. But in a routine day, I literally get up and my routine is I take my meds and down those and then I'm looking towards my day. But that is the same thing every day. However, in between, in the middle, I'm doing something different that's either positive or motivating me or me looking forward to. So when, when the word change is doesn't mean that it, it, it's it, it's you have to take different pills, you have to stop doing this. No, it's adding to your life as well. 
add something to your life that's going to make you happy because we already know we have this illness. We have to deal with it. But the way I go, and I can probably speak for D, Dion, because he's the same way, is that once we get moving and we satisfy, we happy, we forgot we sick. And, and, and here we are running around doing everything. And I see a lot of you guys on social media as well. And I hear the positivity you put out, but you also, instead of reflecting that positivity that we put out, we need to make sure we do it ourselves because me and Dion and Lupus Dream Team, Mel Lupus Warriors, Beat Lupus, we're nothing if we don't do us first and take care of us. So we find those ways of doing it, whether it's in health, whether it's in education, whether it's in inspiring, but health is big. We all know that I can take, you know, up to Deanna, I have to take up to 30 pills a day. I was up to 30 pills a day at one time. I'm down always close to half of that, but I would rather take something that I know that's going to benefit me and at the same time be more of a natural substance to my body as opposed to something that was genetically made in a lab. So, but anyway, that's a um, good point, D. I'm glad you brought that up, man, because that, that's huge. That's huge. Thank you. That's so true. It is so true. And he's so right. People are afraid to change, people are afraid to try new things. Like Anna Marie said, let's try it. If it doesn't work, you get your money back. What have you got to lose? Great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And thank you for coming on. And Anna Marie, did you want to say something else? I just want to see if there were questions from people, if we can oh, answer yeah. questions, right? That's a good idea. Any questions? You have to turn off your mic. I mean, turn on your mic, guys, though, to ask us. And while we're waiting, if you have more questions, please contact right, Deanna, Emma, Dion um personally as well um so we can actually we can also add you to a facebook group with some more information so let's let's get you so you because i know you need to evaluate right but any questions guys going once <laughs> right okay <laughs> hi i don't think so hi well thank you everybody and i wish you all a wonderful evening get some sleep thank you. get some good sleep thank, thank you, you.